Marcus May played incredibly good football for the New York Jets in 2020. He was a jack of all trades, starting the year at strong safety and then transitioning after week 5 to his familiar role patrolling the Jets secondary from center field. May was the team's MVP last year and in the offseason, Joe Douglas and co signed him to the franchise tag worth just over $10 million. Rightfully so, Marcus May isn't happy. He wants a contract extension and so does his agent. But is he worth a 3-4 to four year contract extension? Well, let's find out together and also see exactly how Marcus May projects to fit in with the rest of the safety room after the addition of LaMarcus Joyner. Let's jump into the film. So what I wanted to start off looking at was Marcus May in cover two shells. Greg Williams used them almost exclusively at times, and even though May started at strong safety, he'd often buzz back and then be responsible for that deep half of the field. The reason I wanted to start there was because of Robert Sala. His scheme has developed from this single high cover three Seattle scheme, which is very rigid, to last year, more quarters, cover two, two high shells. So this seemed like a really good place to start, and it happens to be what Marcus May is best at. As we let the film roll here, you're going to see Marcus May and the Jets are in a Tampa 2 look against the Rams. So all that means is you're dropping two deep zones. You've got the middle linebacker who buzzes further down and gets additional depth to fill in that hole between the safeties. And then to compensate for that little weak spot in the zone, the Jets will drop their defensive end. Marcus May is responsible for that left-hand quadrant of the field, and you'll see him looking at the two receivers, and he's reading to see which one of those goes vertical and which one he needs to carry down the field. So as we let the play roll now, you're going to see that Marcus May automatically IDs that the outside boundary receiver squats, and he's now out of play. The eye shift inside to Robert Woods, and as he gets to the top of his stem, watch how well Marcus May identifies the direction he's going, positions, and that first step quickness, ability to undercut, and if that ball's thrown, it's an interception. So he does such a good job as we watch it one more time. His eyes go from outside to inside. He watches Robert Woods, breaks on that ball, does a great job at the top of cover two once he gets to his depth, identifying where to go, reading the stem, and reacting accordingly. I wanted to show you a couple more examples of just how good Marcus May is defending a deep half of the field out of cover two looks. This time he's on the right hand side of the field against Stefan Diggs and once he clears the shallow uh, zones, it's effectively a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Let's let it roll and what you're going to see is he's going to sell once he gets to the top of his stem, he's running a corner. So we call this a bit of a dino route. So Diggs gets out of his break, throws the head, pretends to run a corner and then snaps those head and hips back. Now watch Marcus May. He isn't fooled at all. He's squatting there at the top of his drop, the proper depth. He starts to open his hips just a touch. You see right here. And then as soon as Stefan Hips drops that leg and comes back to the center of the field, he's there, he's ready, and gets hands on the football. Now look, you need to finish this play if you're Marcus May. Gets two hands on it in the red zone, bring that down. But it's a terrific job, once again, as we just mentioned, of getting to the top of the stem, reading, reacting, getting in the proper position, and then making a play on the football. I love to see that. Let's take a look at one more now. This one against Miami. He's on the right-hand side of the field in that deep half of cover two again. And this one's a little unique because there's no number two receiver on the left-hand side of the Dolphins formation. So as the play gets going here, you'll see Marcus May stays a little more to the middle of the field. He uses the boundary as his friend, squeezes the receiver to the sideline, and just look at him stay in the hip pocket and make the play and bring down the interception. He does such a good job staying in phase once he accelerates, flips those hips, and look at this acrobatic catch gets the interception, makes the play. He is so dynamic and so good in cover two, and I think he's going to have a ton of opportunities in this solo scheme, as I mentioned, as he transitions more towards quarters and cover two and away from that cover three single high look. Something that we did see from Marcus May, and we're likely to see again, was him around the box as that strong safety. And if they're going to use LaMarcus Joyner in that single high role when they go to those packages, then you're going to see Marcus May do things like this. Now, Marcus is on the left-hand side in the nickel, and he's going to blitz Josh Allen here. As the play gets going, have a look at number one, he gets a free rush at Josh Allen, but he just whiffs, and Allen lassoes him and gets away. I want to point out how he fails to break down and slow down his feet. He's too fast going into contact, Allen evades him and gets away. This isn't the strength of Marcus May's game. He isn't Jamal Adams around the box. On the next play, you're going to see he's actually successful. Blitzing again from the nickel, uh, this time from the right-hand side of your screen to the top of the screen. 
He gets in the passing lane. You're going to see him disrupt, does a good job getting his hands up and making the pass break up. But even though he's successful here and did it quite a bit for the Jets in 2020, it isn't the strength of Marcus May's game. He can do it a little bit, but I'm not sure it'll be something that Robert Sulla will want to you know, emphasize and keep showing that kind of look. Something he may want to do that with is the ability that Marcus May has to knife in the running game. When he kept bodies cleanly off him and he's able to just attack in space like here, look at that. The way he puts his head down, shoots that gap, great vision, and keeps his shoulder pads clean. Bang, makes the hit on the running back in the backfield for a tackle for loss. Marcus May gets into trouble sometimes when he's in contact and a pulling guard gets his hand on him or a tight end. He doesn't have that play strength, but when he can knife into the backfield, inject himself with speed and anticipation, that's when he's successful as a strong safety. One last look at something that May does as a strong safety and does really well is bait the quarterback into making poor decisions. So on this occasion, May is at the bottom of screen, the last man on the line of scrimmage, and off the play action look, you're going to see him squeeze along the line of scrimmage. So he does that because there's no one coming into his little cover three zone. He squeezes, and as he sees that tight end comes out, he makes a decision. He goes at Jared Goff, and the reason he does that is to make him throw the ball. Notice that as soon as Jared Goff sees him coming, I got to get this to the tight end. He drops back. Look, he drops the interception, but it's an incredible job forcing him and baiting him into this throw. Doesn't quite bring it down, but I love the intelligence and the ability to make something happen based off confusing the quarterback and forcing him to throw the football. Even though Marcus May is the defender here, he's really dictating the play, and that's something you can do a little more of when you're playing in the box. Something that May doesn't do incredibly well but shows flashes with is man coverage. So in this San Francisco seam, Jimmy Ward has been the guy that will come down and play over a tight end man-to-man, and he will negate him for long periods of the matchup. Marcus May can do that a little, but I think that'll be more LaMarcus Joyner's role. Marcus May's bottom right-hand side of the screen here against San Francisco, and you'll see him in the slot. Now, have a look at how well he stays outside leverage because they're in cover one. So what I mean by that is he keeps into the inside where the help is from the deep safety. As the tight end makes his break, have a look where Marcus May is in this hip pocket. This right here is when the tight end is prepared to catch the football. Marcus May has undercut him, is in an ideal position, and is playing tight man coverage. This is a really good example. But there are bad examples as well. Marcus May gets confused here by a switch release against San Francisco later in the half. He thinks the tight end's going to duck back to the inside, and then he runs into his own man and lets in the touchdown. And not only that, doesn't wrap, goes for that kind of legs tackle with the shoulder and lets in the touchdown. Watching it through one more time, little confusion, tries to jump inside, back to the out, doesn't do a great job being sticky and allows the touchdown. What was a bigger concern than that, I'm not super worried about it, was some of his reps in the red zone. Against tight ends in particular, he was bullied at the catch point. He was able to be separated from in that first two yards where there's no illegal contact. You'll see Marcus May on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, down the bottom, opposite the tight end, playing man-to-man, and in that first two yards, just gets blown up with strength, power, bang, separates does a good job getting away from him and securing the catch. You see before he runs across the formation, he's physical with him at the the line of scrimmage, and May is three, four yards behind. Has good closing speed, but can't affect it. Again, San Francisco, same thing again here. This time, towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see him against the tight end, who's Jordan Reed, and Jordan Reed jumps him to the inside. Now, Marcus May actually recovers and gets a pass break up here, but if Jimmy Garoppolo anticipates and throws this ball a little bit better... This is a touchdown for me. You'll see it better from this back angle. He's just on the left-hand side of your screen, straight over the tight end. Watch this step of separation right here. Gets that step. If the ball's out in front, this is a touchdown. Does a good job recovering. Pass breakup, beautiful. Love that long outside arm. But I'm a little concerned by his uh, the frequency in which he's been beaten in man coverage, especially by tight ends in the red zone. One more example, very next play. Down the left-hand side, bottom of screen, you just see... This time he plays it pretty well. He's in a great position as Jimmy Garoppolo lets go of the ball. Get that long arm over, drape it down, break it up at the catch point. But he's just not physical enough. He allows Jordan Reed to score. And that was a bit of a theme I saw throughout his man coverage in the red zone. If Robert Sala wants to do things like this with his safeties, I think he's going to have much more success with LaMarcus Joyner. Some of the slot experience he gained despite not playing in his rightful position in Vegas. I'm interested to see how that plays out. 
Last thing I want to look at here, Marcus Mays between the hashes, and this is probably the best example of him as the single high. Now, ignore his depth. He's not very deep in coverage here, but off the snap, they're playing a kind of a cover match zone. He starts to bail. He's the single high safety. Just watch the athleticism, the range, and the play on the ball. This is an incredible pass breakup. Marcus Mays, just fluency. Look how well he gets out of this. Flips his hips, turning, turning, running, and then just puts down the throttle, turns his head back around, and he's in that hip pocket, in that position to play the ball. Absolutely freakish coverage ability from Marcus May. So that brings us to the end of the Marcus May breakdown today. He's an extremely versatile piece. You saw how good he is as a single high safety at the very end there against Pittsburgh in 2019. There were multiple examples against really good receivers like Robert Woods and Stefan Diggs when he was playing cover two, that deep half of the field, reading and reacting to the wide receiver's vertical stem. Does that really well. Has a little bit of blitz potential, probably isn't the strength of his game. You see he has fantastic anticipation. He has some issues in man coverage, but all in all is pretty good. Just gets overpowered sometimes in the red zone, especially by tight ends at the catch point. Look, I'd like to pay Marcus May. I'd give him a three-year, $32, $33 million deal. If Joe Douglas doesn't, though, coming into 30 years of age, had some injuries early on in his career, I wouldn't be opposed to that either. I think I trust Joe Douglas enough right now to make the correct decision for the franchise. As far as where he fits, look, when they're playing too high safety, obviously he's going to be opposite either Davis or or LaMarcus Joyner. When they're playing cover one or cover three looks, I think you're going to see Marcus May in the box more, like you did at the start of 2020 with Greg Williams. But then when they want that guy to bump down, play man coverage against a tight end, and he's not that robber role, but instead playing tight man, I think Joyner will do that. And then you'll see Marcus May play the single high role. I'm really excited. I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, and following all our contact at Play Like a Jet.